And now they're touring the UK to mark the belated 30th anniversary of Southside. Charlene Spiteri joins me now. Welcome to Times Radio, Charlene. Um, Hello, tell me Mariela. about the tour. I mean, I can basically, Charlene, you're a woman in your 50s, younger than me. And I can basically barely stay up past nine o'clock at night. And you're about to, <laughs> and you're about to embark on a, on a national and then indeed possibly global tour. How does it feel? Um, it's a long show because basically the tour is um, Texas opening up for Texas. So we are our own support band on this tour. So the first half of the show, we come on in a very intimate um, environment, um, the way we've got the stage set up, and we sit down and we play the Southside album from beginning to end. And uh, then we go off, and then this other band, Texas, come on and they do um, all the big hits and um, tracks from the new album, High. And uh, so I'm on stage for, we're, as a band, we're on stage for two and a half hours almost three hours you lost your mind yeah I mean I don't know even what I thought yeah why don't we do this when I get older and my knees are absolutely gone and um you know it's just it's 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 madness but I'm looking at it I'm looking at it as a as a as a probably as a fitness regime <laughs> <laughs> well I hear I hear that you weren't that keen on them during lockdown I think you know lots of people were embracing yoga and joining running groups and I think I'm guilty of almost every single one of them at one point or another not that I've got any staying power but I I, I don't think you stretch yourself any further than dancing around the kitchen is the rumor I've heard is that is that true oh no I did loads of gardening I was like gardening until I was literally digging holes for for the UK um I literally did loads of gardening I did loads of pottery took up pottery um which I absolutely love and um yeah I was doing I did a lot of sewing um yeah I mean I was you know as I've said so many times some of us were a lot of us were in far more privileged um situations than a lot of other people um but yeah we we you know you try and do your part and um everybody I, I lucky I had outdoor space as well yeah but you did have a particularly bad lockdown didn't you and you lost your mum yeah I lost my mum and then I just lost my dad just before Christmas um so it's been quite a it's been quite a couple of years um family wise and to be honest to, to for me you know everybody's like oh, how was your lockdown and I was like you know I'll be honest I was just happy to be home and be with my family and could could have that time together um so yeah I was I, I felt um I, I think probably if I'd gone out and toured, I'd have probably crashed and burned at some point. So I, mm. I felt um, it was good to just have that time with with my family. You know, there's so much to organise, as everybody knows, that have lost family, that there's so much to organise. It takes so much time. And um, even in over lockdown, it did take a lot more time to get things sorted. Yeah, and I, I suppose, you know, I mean, I've been asking people today, you know, filled with anxiety about the news and totally worried you know everyone worried how, how are you feeling I mean if uh, to be completely honest with you it feels so trivial to be on talking about um, Texas um, with the world situation um, I mean I, I have to say the, the 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 bravery and the the strength of the Ukrainian people is just absolutely breathtaking um I think as a world that we need to come together to make sure that, um, you know, to, to work as hard as we possibly can to um, stop um, uh, Russia from, from doing what they're doing. Um, and I can only see as everybody else can is that it, it's going to take the world to band together to, to, to put a halt to this and to, mm. to help the Ukraine. Uh, I've been asking uh, listeners, as you've probably heard at the beginning of the program, for 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 what what they turn to for solace. You know, mm. at, at times like this, when you know, obviously, nothing we're going through is you know even on the same scale as what's happening Absolutely. in Ukraine. But I think it causes terrible anxiety and uh, anxiousness with 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 people, particularly you know young people now. What 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 Absolutely. what they turn to for solace, and people are coming out with amazing things. I mean, it sounds to me like gardening's become your thing, or is it pottery, or what? What do you do when 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 you're feeling like the world is kind of you know crowding in on you and and things are hard to bear it is that it is that thing of being able to try and just you know slow your mind down you know it's that thing sometimes when you get a 
when you get something, that, an idea or a fear, um, an anxiety that, go, that gets into your head, it's, it's you know, it is, it is very difficult and it's, it's definitely difficult for people when we, we still are in certain ways, um, you know, the, the, the back draft of um, have been in a, of being in a, a pandemic and um, having so much time to ourselves and people's anxieties are so much higher than they have been ever and um, it, it is trying to find some way of slowing your mind down and not getting yourself into a wormhole of you know thoughts and ideas that are just going to keep coming so for me it was um, you know going out and literally just gardening and pottering about in the garden and just just being out there and and trying to I guess it's it's a case of like people were saying like that guy was saying he built a bathroom and um yeah. people are building kitchens people are doing loads of DIY and I think it's just trying to take our minds off um the reality and what what everyone you know needs to remember as well is even though we're trying to take our minds away from those anxieties and off the reality it's not to say that we're not thinking about what is going on in the world and being aware of what is going on in the world right now and trying to help in some way and do our part for it. Mm. Um, I, I'm interested in, in in you putting yourself back in, in uh, you know, in the, well, I'm not going to use the word I was going to use, but, you know, basically you've had a complicated relationship uh, with the media uh, over the years. And, and, and you know, in, in some ways it must have been quite nice, you know, to be allowed to sort of drift off into the netherworld, you know, without being in the charts <laughs> and, and, and photographers not sort of standing on your doorstep or people rummaging in your dustbins. Um, were you at all mm. worried about, about restarting all of that? Or do you think that, you know, as women in our 50s were so invisible that you, you could almost do out and no one would take any notice. Yeah. Now. Oh, they don't, you just don't even say, yeah. I mean, it's literally, I mean, I must admit, I go on, I go on stage some, some nights and I'm like, is it really hot or is it just me that's hot? I literally <laughs> look at my band, I'm like, which one? Because I, 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 I'm getting confused which one it is. I don't know if it's me or if it is actually the room. Um, and um, everybody sort of looks at me as I'm basically turning a lovely colour of crimson um but it's um you know I, I I have to say that I think that I've been relatively lucky that um I've managed to stay out of the media um throughout my whole career um and yeah there have been moments that it, it has invaded into my life and and the chaos that it causes and and you know, for me, someone like me who doesn't court it and, and doesn't work it, um, the chaos that it can cause in certain situations is is just outrageous um, because it's fine if you're the person in it, but it's everybody else round about you, your whole family that kind of thinks that something's in a paper or something's reported on, that that is the absolute fact. And you're like, nope, that's not what it is. And you're trying to pick all the pieces up. Um, you know, so for me, as I said, I feel... I, I feel pretty lucky that I've never really um, had it pushed down on me too much in, um, in, in a massive amount of ways. So I, I don't ever have a fear of it. Um, it's part of what I do. What about in terms of the pressure to kind of stay looking good and things? I mean, when we're in the garden digging or uh, whatever, you can kind of look how you want. But, you know, <laughs> you're very much now going to be, again, up there. Me? <laughs> you look gorgeous. I can see you. You look. Think, you look like a, a Christmas like, card. Actually, you've got a very no, bonny cap, at me beanie with my on. <laughs> I've got me my hat on, my beanie on. I'm like trying to hide my hair, um, because it's literally. I woke up this morning. It's like a bush. I would just like to point out that I'm in my gorgeous dressing room. I'm using an ironing board as to stand for <laughs> my my um computer at the moment, and um, you know, it's, I, you know. I, I think, you know, I always think you as, as a woman, you, you, you just, you're a great um, advert for women, full stop. You always have been because, you know, you're just like, this is me. This is who I am. This is what I do. And I'm bloody good at it. And that is the most important thing. Um, and I think when you have something to say, you have an opinion, you have a personality, um, you have a smile, for God's sake. Um, I think that says so much more um, about it, it just wears everything down that what's on the outside 
um it just it just literally annihilates all of that eventually um but you know i've always thought that i'm not a big makeup wearer or anything like that um because as you just saw i'm always rubbing my face um it's i always think that uh when i was young i used to think my theory always was that if somebody wakes up to you in the morning and you look relatively the same as you did the night before you've got a good chance <laughs> But your daughter, I think, has has um, become a model. I mean, she's absolutely gorgeous. Why wouldn't she? She has. But, but does that worry you? I, I, again, just the sort of sense. I mean, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, a similar period we both grew up in, and I never thought it could be worse than that in terms of, you mm. know, the misogynism and and the being judged on how you looked and all of those things. And and in many ways, I sometimes feel. I mean, my daughter's seventeen now. That it's got worse. That that I now think the expectations. I totally agree with you. Um, you know, I get asked the question so, so much as well, you know, especially in the music industry and, you know, so many people with, you know, the movements of Me Too and everything, it, people say, no, things have got better, things must have got better. And it's a bit like, no, it's actually got worse because it's just better hidden now um, because everybody's ticking the right boxes and watching their P's and Q's. Um, you know, they're literally like, right, what do we need? Um, we need a woman, we need a person of colour, we need you know, it's literally like a it's literally like a chart that people are going down and it's just like all the prejudices are literally being hidden, um, which is not good. So I don't think we are going for as forward as, as, as much as everybody thinks we are. Um, you know, when my daughter said she was going into modelling, I have to say I was a bit like, oh god um I, I was like what do you mean um and you know after she started doing it you know because there, there is that thing where you've just got to say well you know if that's how you see it and that's what you want to do I said to her as long as you do your a-levels and you get all your qualifications in place then yeah fine and she did do that and she she, she sees it as she really enjoys it. She's very professional about it. My fear was that when she didn't get jobs, because it's based on how you look, um, how that would affect her. And to be honest, she just sees it as like, that's that's the game. That's that's the job I'm in. That's the way it is. And she says that if you know she can save up and um, earn some good money, that hopefully at some point in her life, she can buy a flat or a house or something. Um, then good so for me that's again because my daughter's in a very privileged um place that um you know she she's grown up very differently to how i grew up um the fact that she's talking about you know getting her own money and being able to afford a place of her own then i'm kind of like okay well she seems to be on a decent route at this moment in time yeah, so you can uh, relax for now. We can never relax for now, as parents, exactly. can we? Yeah. Know, exactly, we never can. Tell me uh, uh, something that I'm fascinated by as well, which is how songwriting changes over the years. Because I imagine that when you're young, it's a bit like, you know, everyone writes a poem when they're a teenager, don't they? Because of the love and heartbreak and, you know, and songs must pour out of you when you're young because all of that drama is, is going yeah. on in your life. But here you are, a grown-up, mature woman. Uh, you know, in 2017, you married Chef Bryn Williams. May I just congratulate you on marrying a chef before lockdown, by the way? <laughs> Really, the benefit of foresight. Um, but it didn't but, work. Know, what, <laughs> no, he didn't cook. What, what do you um, what do you feel motivated to write songs about now? It's funny because um, you know, especially because we're doing the South Side tour as well at the beginning. So I'm singing songs at the moment. We're playing songs that you know. I I I met Johnny when the week before my 18th birthday, and I remember him saying to me you know do you write and I was like yeah but you know what it was like back then it was like we were brave we were bold we were just like yeah I can do anything and um we the first song we wrote together was I do what I love her now funnily enough as a 54 year old woman I still look at that song and I think Jesus was I a genius you know like were we <laughs> were Johnny were Johnny Knight could because I still absolutely stand by those lyrics you know, I didn't just want a lover. I wanted everything. I wanted the full package. I wanted the best friend, the lover, the confidant. I wanted everything. And I still, you know, I still want that. I think 
writing songs now um, as as a as a fifty four year old woman, I think you know we think we're so punk and rebellious when we're young, um, and I would say now that that I think probably only now that I, that I'm punk because I actually don't care. Um, it's 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 I'm I'm so much um I I will absolutely say exactly what I'm thinking I will put it down there I'll, I you know my heart my soul um all my emotions and my feelings so I feel that there's a there's more of an insight into me personally whereas back then I I would have thought oh no maybe I don't want to give that away or, I don't feel confident saying that because that that's too much of a side of me that I don't want people to see or I don't want people to they might think I'm you know a bit wussy or whatever and now I'm like I don't care I'll just like write it down. <laughs> well just finally I mean time has just sped by talking to you you'll have to come back on I'm sorry you just have to <laughs> but um when there isn't a war on uh but but uh, yeah you know, oh please just, God, finally... just let this war finish. There'll be a lot of um, women out there who'd quite like to know what it feels like to stand up at a, on a stage in midlife and have people roar and clap and appreciate you and celebrate you. Uh, does it feel as good as I'm making it sound? Yeah, it does. Even better, honest to God. It's literally like sticking your head out the window of a car um, driving at 200 miles an hour. It is like, it's... It's breathtaking, it's emotional, it's so much fun. You laugh so much because, you know, we have quite um, mouthy audiences and I'm quite <laughs> mouthy on stage. Um, it's, just, it's, just, it's just an amazing um, exchange of um, emotions and feelings and we're all in it together. And as, you know, as I, as I, I say to people when I go on stage, you know, I do talk a lot. I, I do chat away. And I say to people, I say, you know, if you just want the, the record, go home and stick it on the stereo and just listen to it. <laughs> do you know what I mean? You come into a show, you come into a live show for something else. You come into, again, get a, a, a better insight into the band, um, a better insight to, to who we are and what we do and to what um, actually being in a band is all about. Um you know, live music is so important. Making records is so important to me. And, you know, there's a whole flood of young bands that are coming through that need so much support and so much help. And the truth is, is if it wasn't for the public buying all the Texas records and buying all the tickets and through these 33 years, you know, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you. So the, the, the public are massively important, um, a, a, a massive part of making a band successful. I love that image of sticking your head uh, out the window of your car <laughs> as you drive at 200 miles an hour. That is a feeling I'd very much like to experience. Uh, Charlene Spateri, you are going to experience it. Thank you so much for joining me on Times Radio. Just 